Hello and welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Supermarket giant Woolworths last week put its toe in the water to trial a plan to buy branded milk products directly from a group of Manning Valley, New South Wales dairy farmers. In a deal that mirrors similar arrangements in the UK, Woolworths said it hoped the trial would result in a better deal for dairy farmers and would give consumers a new range of branded milk products. The farmers have lodged an application to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission to allow them to collectively bargain with Woolworths. Woolworths General Manager of Fresh Food, Pat McKenty, said it was hoped the trial would provide a model to underpin the long-term sustainability of the industry. Manning Valley dairy farmer Tim Bale said he and his colleagues believe the arrangement had the potential to deliver a far better deal for producers. Multiple herbicide resistance in weeds posed a bigger problem than glyphosate resistance in Australian and global cropping systems. And the only way forward was diversity in weed control practices. This was the view presented by Director of the International Survey of Herbicide Resistant Weeds, Ian Heap, to the Global Herbicide Resistance Challenge Conference, supported by the Grains Research and Development Corporation. Dr Heap said a focus of discussion at the conference was resistance in weeds to glyphosate, the most important knockdown herbicide. But the biggest issue going forward was what would we do with weeds that evolved resistance to many different herbicides, he asked. To manage this problem, producers would have to use alternative means of weed management and reduce their reliance on herbicide. Indonesia, Australia's largest and fastest growing wheat market, is eager to expand its intake of Australian grain, particularly if consistency continues to improve. This was the message from an Australian Grains and Pulses seminar in Jakarta, jointly hosted by the Australian Grains Export Innovation Centre, Austrade and Grain Growers Limited, and attended by some of Indonesia's largest flour mills. The seminar was in response to requests by Indonesian millers and traders for more information on Australian wheats, grades, seasonal quality, processing ability and how to gain the best value for their use. AGIC market program leader Rosalind Jetner said Indonesian buyers indicated they would buy more wheat from Australia if they could consistently purchase wheats with baking qualities that were competitive with North American wheats. Indonesia was the largest market for Australian wheat and continued to grow with wheat consumption up 9% during the past financial year with an increase in the national capital, Jakarta, of 14%. Incitec Pivot Fertilisers is stepping up its agronomy training program in 2013 as the first of 12 agronomy in practice courses kick off across eastern Australia. The course focuses on the practical aspects of making credible fertiliser recommendations to farmers involved in cropping, pasture, summer crops, sugarcane or horticulture. The course is aimed at training the next generation of agronomists as well as current advisors who want to enhance their skills in soil and plant nutrition. This year's participants include a cross-section of commercial and private agronomists, government advisors and students from Charles Sturt University's Bachelor of Agricultural Science program. Agronomy training manager with Incitec Pivot Fertilisers, Nigel Bodner, described the agronomy in practice course as the only one of its type in Australia which combines science and software training to equip agronomists with tools to deliver practical advice in soil and plant nutrition to farmers. Finally this week, not long after 16,000 pigs were found floating in a Chinese river near Shanghai, nearly 1,000 dead ducks appeared in the Nan River in southwest Sinchuan province. The carcasses were last week removed from the river and the ducks were buried two metres deep in a designated area in 50 plastic bags, according to the Xinhua News Agency. Authorities still aren't sure what caused the demise of the birds and are still investigating. The Nan River is not a source of drinking water. A recent Chinese report noted that the country faced a grave situation from chemical pollution and that there had been a string of chemical pollution accidents leading to polluted drinking water and higher rates of cancer in some areas. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. 
We look forward to your company again next week. I'm Andy Walker.